Today we've got a fairly interesting integral, and what makes <coughs> today we've got an interesting integral that's going to use a couple of techniques that I really like. So let's evaluate the integral from zero to one of the sine of the natural log of x over the natural log of x dx. So since we see the natural log of x kind of all over the place here. I think that gives us a motivation to do a substitution. Perhaps we could substitute for the natural log of x. So for instance, let's maybe set, we'll say y equal to the natural log of x. But now let's observe that that's going to be equivalent to setting x equal to e to the y. But that means that our dx component will be e to the y dy just taking the derivative there. And now let's notice as x approaches zero from above, which is what's happening at this lower bound of integration, the natural log of x, in other words, y is approaching negative infinity. Whereas as x approaches one from below, we have y approaching zero because the natural log of one is zero. And then, well, looking at this, we see that everything that we'll need for our substitution is sorted. So let's see what our new integral looks like. So now we're going to end up with the integral from minus infinity up to zero of, well, let's maybe write this in some sort of order. We're going to have e to the y over y times the sine of y dy. But integrating the sine of y times e to the y, well, that can be done with integration by parts. But that y in the denominator is problematic. So that means, well, we've got to do something to work with that y or to maybe get rid of that y in the denominator. And the thing that we're going to do is observe that this, in fact, looks like a function that's been evaluated at two endpoints. So we've got our integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then we can write this as e to the z times y over y times sine of y, where we evaluate this from z approaching infinity up to z equals 1. And then, well, that's still inside of the y integral. So let's talk our way through this. So observe if we set z equal to 1 in this object, we pretty clearly get the integrand up here. And then, well, what about this z approaching infinity? Well, let's observe that all of the y values here are negative. So if y takes on a negative value, then as z approaches infinity, the exponent there is approaching minus infinity. But as the exponent approaches minus infinity, that exponential function approaches zero. So that's why that thing zeroes out. Okay, so now at this stage, what we're going to do is apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we can, in fact, view this thing right here, this evaluation, as what I like to call a zeroth integral. Applying the fundamental theorem of calculus will turn it into a first integral. So let's see. We'll get the integral from minus infinity up to zero. But then applying the fundamental theorem of calculus means we need to take the derivative with respect to z. Taking the derivative of this with respect to z will cancel this y right here. So let's see. That's going to give us the integral from, let's see, infinity up to 1 of e to the z times y times the sine of y dz dy. So something like that. And now, well, this is a bit awkward. Notice that here we're integrating from infinity to 1. We'd really like that uh, to be like maybe in order of the size of the number. So maybe we could go from 1 to infinity. Now, we can do that by introducing a minus sign on the outside. But then also what we'll do is change the order of integration. So let's see. That means we're going to have a minus and then the integral from 1 up to infinity and then the integral from minus infinity to zero. And now we've got e to the z times y times the sine of y dy dz. So something that looks like that.
And now we're gonna evaluate this inner integral in one of my favorite ways. So we're gonna do this with integration by parts, but we're actually gonna split it up into two pieces and use two different techniques of integration by parts on each piece. So let's see, I'm gonna have on the outside will be minus the integral from one to infinity of all of this stuff dz. I'll put a dz over here in the end, but now what I'll do is I'll take this inner integral, the y integral, and split it into two pieces. And the first piece will look something like this. We're gonna have one over z squared plus one times the integral from minus infinity up to zero of e to the z times y times the sine of y dy. So observe here, I'm like color coding these two integrals while we're at it. And then to that, I'll add z squared over z squared plus one times, well, it's gonna be times the same integral. So we've got our integral from minus infinity up to zero of e to the z times y times the sine of y dy. And then that's all within our z integral. So we've got a dz out like behind the entire thing. Now let's observe here that I split that into two pieces and I weighted each of the pieces. But if I were to add that back together, I'd get z squared plus one over z squared plus one. In other words, I'd get the number one. So everything would actually work out quite nicely there. Okay. So now from here, we'll do a step of integration by parts for each of these. And let's perhaps set up our integration by parts way over here where we have room. So let's look at the yellow integration by parts. So in this case, I'll take u to be equal to e to the y z. Notice that's gonna make du equal to, well, this is all with respect to y, so it's gonna be z times e to the y z dy. And then, well, that means that my dv must be equal to the sine of y dy, which means my v is equal to minus cosine of y. Okay, so that's good. We've got our integration by parts set up for the yellow integral. Now let's do an integration by, by, by parts set up for the blue integral. So here we're gonna take u to be equal to sine of y, but that means that du is equal to the cosine of y dy, and then we'll take dv to be the rest. So that's gonna be e to the y times z dy, but that means that v is gonna be one over z times, let's see what we have here, e to the y z. Okay, good. So now we've got both of these integration by parts set up and we're ready to, well, apply them. So let's maybe make sure to keep our color coding going. So I've got this minus sign out front, our integral from one to infinity of, so let's see, I've got this one over z squared plus one in front of the entire yellow part. But what does the integration by parts formula say to do? Well, we'll have u times v minus the integral of v du. So let's see, u times v here will be what? We'll have minus cosine of y times e to the y z, and then minus the integral of v du. So that's gonna turn into a plus. And then we have our integral from minus infinity up to zero of, so let's see, v du will give us a z here. And then after that, we're gonna have e to the y z times the cosine of y dy. Okay, good. So that's our yellow integral. And then let's get set up for our blue integral. It looks like we're gonna need two lines for this, but that's okay. So we've got z squared over z squared plus one. And then for our blue integral, applying the integration by parts formula, what are we going to have? We'll have on the outside one over z, and then times the sine of y e to the y z. Okay, 
And then here we've got minus the integral from minus infinity up to zero of, let's see, v du in this case. So that'll be one over z times e to the y z cosine of y. And then that's dy, and then that's all within our dz integral. And then, well, it looks like I forgot to put the fact that we're evaluating this thing right here from, let's see, minus infinity to zero. And then we're also evaluating this one over here from minus infinity to zero. Okay, nice. But now let's look closely at what we have. And let's observe that this yellow integral right here, which I'm underlining in red, is z over z squared plus one, and then the integral of e to the y z times cosine y. But then this blue integral over here, since we have a z squared here, that's really a z over z squared plus one, and then the same integral. But then it's attached to a minus sign. So that means when we recombine all of this, that stuff is gonna cancel. So let's make that stuff cancel. Okay, so that cancels with that. And then, well, let's see, does some other stuff cancel? Well, in fact, it does. If we evaluate this at zero, this is y equals zero, we have sine of zero, which is zero. And then if we let y approach minus infinity, since our values of z are positive, that means that that exponential is approaching zero. So both of these parts approach zero. Now, notice that we get some stuff approaching zero over here too. The minus infinity part into the exponential will approach zero. So that means all we're left with is what we get when we evaluate this at y equals zero. But let's see, evaluating this at y equals zero will we'll actually simplify this a lot. Notice that this minus sign and this minus sign will cancel and we have the integral from one to infinity. And then we'll have cosine of zero, which is one, e to the zero, which is one. And then we have this one over z squared plus one dz. So we've got something like that. But that's actually an integral that's fairly easy to calculate. The antiderivative here is the inverse tangent of z. We need to evaluate that from one to z approaching infinity. Well, as z approaches infinity, it's well known that the inverse tangent approaches pi over two, and then the inverse tangent of one is pi over four. So that means we have pi over two minus pi over four, making our final answer pi over four.